Thank you so much for a beautiful prelude, Olivia. Good morning. morning. Welcome. It's nice to have you with us this morning on our first Sunday in Advent. Um, Advent, the season, of course, uh, right before uh, Christmas. We get four Sundays in Advent every year. The number of actual days in Advent is different um, every year um, because... Sometimes it starts on November 27th or November 30th or December 1st. You never know. Uh, But this day we, or this year we get uh, 28, 27, however many days in Advent. So um, it's um, a season of of waiting and watching and hoping, uh, preparing uh, this Sunday, this year during the four Sundays of Advent. We will have a different theme um, each morning. Um, And so you'll hear the theme um, in our Advent wreath lighting uh, liturgy. You'll hear the theme um, in uh, the hymn of the day, in the sermon, in the lesson. Uh, So this morning's theme is wait and watch. Uh, So you can be watching for that. There we go. Um, And I'm noticing a special welcome this morning to Payson, who is worshiping with us for the first time, what, a a month, two months, two months old. So welcome. Thank you for being with us. Um, You will notice the color of the season of Advent is blue. Uh, So we see that through the um, the pyramids, um, our Advent tree that will be up um, later, you'll notice that color as well. Let's begin. I invite you to stand as is comfortable for you. And we'll begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one and assure us of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, all of your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew, to follow the ways of peace. Amen. We'll join this morning in our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Number 257, we'll do verses 1, 2, and 4. Let's sing.
Come, O branch of Jesse, free your own from Satan's feeling. From depths of hell your people stay, and give them victory over the grave. Rejoice! the congregation to be seated and thank you for your patience with the fact there was a different hymn in the bulletin and on the screen these things happen and God still shows up we'll turn to our liturgy for lighting the advent wreath as I said today's theme is wait and watch now waiting is hard especially when we are waiting for something that we are really really excited about how many of us have stood at the front door waiting and watching for a package to arrive or for a family member or a friend to show up for a long expected visit? In Advent, we wait and we watch as well. We wait and watch eagerly, excitedly, even impatiently for the arrival of the baby Jesus. We wait and we watch for the kingdom of God to show up here on earth with love and with justice for all of us. So today we will light our first candle to represent our waiting and watching during Advent. We'll sing Waiting for Jesus while the first candle is lit. Um, this is a, 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 it's at least a new song to me. Um, it is in the, the next hymnal supplement that's not yet in the pews, but we did print the music for you um, in the bulletin to make singing a new song a little bit easier. So our acolytes can um, get the, ready for the candle lighting and we will sing Waiting for Jesus. Let us pray together in the prayer of the day. Holy God, you sit with us while we wait for Jesus to be born. Guide us in our waiting and watching, that our waiting can be full of love, joy, and building your kingdom here and now. Amen. This time we'll sing Jesus Loves Me, and the kids are invited forward for the kids' message. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, so.
Oh, yes, we're just talking about our Christmas trees. And um, how many of you, on top of your tree, if you remember, if it's not up yet, maybe it's up already, have a star on the top of your tree? Okay, who was an angel on the top of the tree? Oh, I'm interested. Who has a star on the top of their tree? All right. Angel? Ah, angels are more popular on the top of the tree. Cool. Well, you know what? When I was your age, it was so hard to wait. Oh, so hard to wait. Are you good at waiting? Oh, I'm not either. You know, I remember when uh, I asked my mom, Mom, can I go outside and play? And she said, no, you have to wait until after you take your nap. Or, Mom, can I have a cookie? No, Paul, you have to wait until after dinner. Mom, can I, uh, can I, what was another one that we would, she would ask me to wait all the time. I would want to open up presents right away for Christmas. And she said, no, Paul, we have to wait three more weeks until Christmas Eve before we open up our presents. Oh, it was so hard to wait. Well, I think whether you're young or whether you're old, waiting is hard, isn't it? Um, well, when we wait, when we wait and don't just get what we want right away, it helps us to enjoy what we're waiting for even more, right? Imagine today or tomorrow if we opened up all of our presents and when Christmas Eve came, there were no presents to open. That'd be kind of a bummer, right? Part of really enjoying uh, presence is waiting to open them up. Part of enjoying playing with a friend is having to wait until you get together with your friend. Waiting is hard, but waiting helps us to love things more and to appreciate things more. As we wait for Christmas this year, um, we'd like to hand out Advent calendars. And let me see here. Why don't you take one here? There you go. And I'm going to put this box of Advent calendars in the back there so anyone can take one on your way out today because we have plenty. And this one is called Born to Reign in Us Forever. Born to Reign in Us Forever. And there you see the picture of Mary and Joseph. Um, what are those animals to the right? Those are sheep, yep. And oh, there's baby Jesus right in the manger. And then who are those guys over here? They're the shepherds, aren't they? What a beautiful evening when Jesus was born into the world. Nobody really expected him to come that way. And so we're going to wait all these days until we get to Christmas Eve. So you can bend it like this. And then when you set it someplace like on your table or in your bedroom, it just sits right like that. Each day, starting today, we can start opening up the windows. You can see that each of the windows has a number, but they don't go in order. Number one is right up here, see? Where's number two? Can you find number two anywhere on the board? Oh, yeah, so you have to look for it. And so today, let's open up door number one. So you kind of have to bend it a little bit like this, and it comes open. There you go. Did you get it? All right. You want to help her just a little bit to find number one? Yeah, open it up like a book. And in here, it looks like there's a prayer for each one. What a cool way to celebrate Advent. Maybe you can open this up at dinner time each day, and this prayer can be your uh, meal prayer. I'm going to read this prayer for us today on this first day of Advent. Come, Lord Jesus, come into the manger, come into our hearts, come into the world. With your justice, change our hearts. With your love, change our world. Amen. What a nice prayer, huh? Well, that's the prayer for Advent 1. Maybe you can pray this prayer when you sit at the table today. And then number 2, boy, will you open up number 2 in the morning? Maybe that can be your morning prayer, or maybe you wait until supper time and open it up with your family. It's totally up to you, but try to open up each day 
there's a door, or we can call it a window, I suppose. Thanks, kids, for coming up. You can go back to your seats as we wait during the season of Advent. Our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, Both readings today have to do with waiting and watching. So from Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary and his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And now if you feel comfortable, I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Let's sing our gospel verse, the refrain of O come, O come, or O come, all ye faithful. Thank you, Olivia. It's a gospel verse, just the refrain. Oh, it's okay. Oh, what hymn number is, is that in the book? 296, is it? Well, we'll just, let's uh, sing it. Nissa, could you start us off with the a cappella? Oh, come, come let us adore him. him. Oh, oh, come, come let, let us adore him. him. Oh, oh, come, let us adore him. him Christ the Lord. No worries. Olivia, we, I just snuck that in as something to do before the gospel gets us into a little Christmas tune as we hear from Luke chapter 21 of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you, Lord, for being together with our brothers and sisters in Christ Send us your Holy Spirit, Lord, that uh, you may open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive your word gladly and share it when we leave this place. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, one day, at the height of the Christmas season, there was a young boy standing at, at a department store at the bottom of the escalator, intently watching as the escalator went up and then down and up and then down. He refused to take his eyes off of it. A saleswoman came up to him and said, Young man, are you lost? Well, as a matter of factly, the boy said, Nope, I'm just waiting for my chewing gum to come back. Well, that's quite a bit of patience that that young boy was showing, but how gross, right? (laughs) I think that boy displayed lots of patience that most children don't have. Children have a hard time waiting for things. It's especially true at Christmas time, as I was speaking about in our children's lesson today. 
A pastor friend of mine told me one Christmas what his son did. Now, his son was waiting to get a PlayStation, a brand new PlayStation for Christmas. He was hoping he would receive it. Well, at the beginning of December, some of the presents went under the tree, and he saw a box with his name on it, and it looked like the size of a PlayStation box. Oh, he couldn't wait, and he didn't. One day after school, he went to the Christmas tree and took out the box and carefully, carefully tore apart, tore apart the tape, careful not to tear the paper. When he got it all open, there it was, a brand new PlayStation. He couldn't believe it. He was so excited. Carefully, he wrapped the present back up and put it under the tree. Well, when Christmas Eve came, it was his turn to open up the Christmas present, and he was just kind of in a solemn, kind of bummed out mood, opened up the present and thanked his mom and dad for the PlayStation. Later on, he confessed it to his dad that he had opened up the, the present, and he was so sorry that he had done that early. And the, his dad asked him, well, how did it feel? And the boy said, oh, it was the worst Christmas ever. His dad asked him, why? Well, because I peaked. Isn't that true, that when we lose that waiting, that patience, uh, sometimes the, the joy fizzles out of what we're waiting for? Well, the inability to wait isn't just uh, something that kids go through. It's hard for grown-ups, too. And it doesn't help that we live in a culture of instant gratification. We get whatever we want. And if you don't have the money to buy it now, pull out the old credit card. You can buy it now and pay for it later. Well, there are millions and millions of families that are burdened with deep debt <laughs> because of the inability to wait. The inability to wait doesn't just affect our finances, but it also affects our spiritual lives. It really does. For example, we might come to God in prayer and ask for guidance and answers or good health, but then because we don't receive it in that time frame that we want, we can get impatient and we don't feel as if God is answering us. And then our faith maybe feels weak because we expected God to answer in our timeline and based on our expectations. And God doesn't seem to be doing what we want. And then doubt slips in. We doubt ourselves a little bit. We wonder if we didn't pray right or we wonder if we didn't deserve it. Maybe we wonder if we didn't have enough faith as that other person that seems like they have so much faith. Somehow maybe we even feel like we're being punished. And so that inability to wait in this instant gratification culture sometimes backfires on us in our faith lives when we wonder what's wrong with us. But then we need to remember that God is never a genie in the bottle. God isn't one that we just rub the bottle and suddenly God answers our prayers just the way we want God to answer them. We need to trust in God's timing. And God's timing isn't always like ours. But our timing, you know, is so short-sighted, isn't it? Our timing is so limited. But God's timing, however, is perfect. I tell you, God is never too late. And God is never too early. God answers prayers. And God does for you what is needed in your life at the perfect timing. Right on time. But that means that we are in the process of waiting and being patient to see what God is doing in our lives. Because it's true, while we wait, God isn't passive. While we are waiting in that, oh, for some of us, waiting is difficult, especially when it has to do with health issues. While we're waiting, did you know that God is busy at work? God, God is busy at work behind the scenes, unfolding his divine plan for each and every one of you. The Bible tells us that Waiting is an important part of our faith lives. An important part of our faith lives. Remember the Israelites in the wilderness from the book of Exodus? Well, they knew that they were headed to the promised land, and God wanted the promised land for them, but it took them 40 years to get there. They waited a long time. Why? Because God knew that they weren't ready for the promised land. God knew that they weren't ready before them. They were too inwardly focused they were so ego-driven, they were so negative, they were so complaining that if the promised land had been there on day two, they wouldn't have experienced it at all. God needed to have their eyes 
wide open in order to experience his promises. Remember how Jacob wanted to marry Rachel in the uh, book of Genesis. He knew that it was God. He knew that that's what God wanted for him. But he had to wait 14 years before he was able to marry his true love. Now, some of that was because of the trickery of his uncle Laban. But nevertheless, God allowed 14 years to pass before Jacob could have his dream come true and marry Rachel. Because God needed to shape Jacob. He needed to mold Jacob. It allowed Jacob to live and work in honesty and integrity, which his life, if you remember the story of Jacob, his life really needed at that point. Remember the story of King David. He was anointed by the prophet Samuel to become the next king after the disappointing reign of King Saul. But David had to wait 14 years before he was actually crowned. And what did David do while he was waiting to become king? Was he the prince waiting in the royal palace, just waiting for that time when he could step up in front of the people? Did he have some kind of public office where he was really important in the community? No. Jacob was out in the field. He was a simple shepherd. God gave him that vision that he would be a great king. But he had to be a shepherd, his, his, the same thing that he was doing as a young boy, for 14 more years. Because God was trying to grow him and help him understand what it meant to shepherd a great people, a stubborn people. Psalm 23 came out of Jacob's time as a shepherd. Remember Joseph in the book of Genesis. He had overwhelming dreams that God was going to make him a great person. But you know, it didn't happen right away. One bad thing happened after the other. One bad circumstance happened after the other. Mostly at the hands of other people. Not by his mistakes, but others. But he would not let go of that vision that God had given to him. He knew that God had something in store for him if he waited one day at a time. If when those bad people and those bad circumstances entered his life, if he could keep up the hope, if he wouldn't give up, if he realized that God still had something great for him, he would be even more ready for it when it came. And so from the time that he was thrown into the well by his jealous brothers until the time he became second in command to the king of Egypt, he had to wait 13 years. I'm sure he dreamed of reconciling with his brothers too and to see his dad again. They were a broken family. He couldn't wait till they could have peace as a family again. Some of us can relate to that. He had to wait another 10 years for his family to come together. But in that waiting, they were all ready for that reconciliation. And what about the book of Psalms? There are so many Psalms in the Bible that cry out, How long, O Lord? How long? Well, I don't know if many of you read Christ in Our Homes. This, we always have free copies uh, by the door there uh, on the rack, uh, the table. I read this for a council of devotions uh, this month, and I thought it was so fitting for today, too. Uh, the, the devotion writer says, I remember exhausting, sleepless nights trying to get a fussy newborn to sleep. How long, oh Lord? A friend's five-year-old is going through cancer treatment. How long, oh Lord? A clergy friend lives with a debilitating depression. How long, oh Lord? How long? It's a universal plea. In Psalm 13, the resolution seems to come fast when the psalmist goes from how long to he has dealt bountifully with me in just a few verses. But in life, that journey seems to take, uh, it's more complex and it takes a lot longer. But it still can be true. This devotional was written during the peak of the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Many cried, how long, O Lord? And yet, also noted God's bounty and providence, even in the face of death. Medical professions were hero, professionals were heroes. Strangers helped strangers. Aid poured in from unexpected places. God was at work. We can cry how long while simultaneously being assured of God's presence and love now. The sorrow is real, but God is really there. How long, O oh Lord, we wait but yet God's promises are being built up and we can experience them soon. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a whole nother year has passed since the writing of that devotional. And we are crying out, Lord, how long we're waiting for healing. 
and that healing will come to our nation, to our world. Then we have our gospel from Luke today. Jesus is telling his disciples and us that he's going to come back. We can call that the second advent, when Jesus comes again. And we're to be ready, Jesus said. We're to be like, like servants being ready for the master to come back from a, a week-long wedding banquet. They weren't sure when he was going to come back, but they better have the house ready. And when Jesus comes again, he tells us that he will make all things new and all of God's people will live in blessedness and abundance. But God makes us wait. We have no idea when that's going to come. Paul thought it would happen in his lifetime. Here we are 2,000 years later. We're still waiting for God to make all things new in our world. But why do we wait? Why do we have to wait? Because it does something for our spirits. We are to wait and watch and be ready. Because the Bible says that God has little things happening all around us. And if we watch for them, if we realize what God is doing, we realize that God's kingdom is coming closer and closer and closer. We are to be alert and wait for him. As if to say, all of these examples, as if to say something occurs while we wait. So what occurs while we wait and watch? Well, with the stories I just reminded you of, let me summarize some of the things that happen to us while we wait. Waiting and watching on God strengthens our faith. Strengthens our faith. Waiting helps us to experience God's will, not our own will, not me first, Give it to me now mentality of our ego and self-will. Waiting increases our trust that God knows what's best and we will wait for him to answer. And remember, while we wait, God's not passive. God is working his plan in us and his purpose. Second, waiting on God allows him to grow us. Back to King David, he was a shepherd for quite a long time before he became king. And during that time, this young guy, he was being trained, he was being grown, he was being molded by, in wisdom and humility as he was waiting to become king. For us today, uh, we too can wait upon the Lord, and as we do that, God will mold and shape us to be resilient, to be patient, to deepen our love. Third, waiting on God reminds us that God is waiting on us. Waiting on God reminds us that God is waiting on us for us to get to the point of choosing his path and not our own path. And that's so important to desire God's will in our lives and not just our own. God's invitation is always there, but it's as if we need to struggle with our own self-will and our desire to be in control. We need to struggle with trying to do everything that we envision life to go until we finally say, God, I give up. You're in charge, not me. And so God is waiting for, for us to choose his path and not our own. God's invitation is always there, though. He is revealing his goodness to us and desires us to be open to what he is doing in our lives each and every day. But are we watching or are we just looking inward? Revelation 3.20, Jesus stands at the door and knocks, waiting for us to open the door to him. He is coming again. Fourth, waiting on God helps us to be fully present in the now, even if the now doesn't seem all that comfortable. But now, my friends, is all we have right now. And wishing things were different only makes us miss out on the blessings we have right here, right now. Wishing things were different or wishing things would change only gets us to look at this future that doesn't even exist and then we waste the minutes that we have today. So waiting allows us to take a deep breath and experience what God is doing in our lives right now. And the joyful anticipation uh, that we have to watch and wait for what the Lord is doing in our midst. Advent, my friends, is a season of waiting. And we lit our first candle, waiting and watching. It's not a passive thing. It's a watchful thing, a watchful waiting. And as you wait upon the Lord this Advent and in the season of your lives, may you receive the promise that God will strengthen you. When you struggle, you, God will mount you up upon wings like eagles. You shall run and not be weary. You shall not be exhausted. He will renew you. But we wait and we watch. Amen.
we sing our next hymn. A hymn of waiting and watching, really, as the people of God waited for the long-expected Jesus. you to stand as is comfortable for you. Gathered into one, waiting and watching for God's kingdom on earth, let us lift our hearts and minds together in prayer for the church and the whole world. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. Bless the ministry of Chatfield and Root Prairie, of San Marcos and San Juan, our partners in Colombia, and of all who labor for your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, from prairies to forests, valleys to mountains, we praise you for the goodness of all that you have made. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. Help us to treat the earth with kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we mourn the brokenness in our communities, our governments, our institutions. Bless all people who lead. Bless them with courage, compassion, and wisdom to work for the good of all people. Make us bold to do your work of love and justice here in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births or deaths, divorces or new unions, new jobs or retirements, healing or life transitions of any kind. Today we pray especially for all of us who are weary of waiting for the end of this pandemic. Give us hope that this difficult time will come to an end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join us in our worship in person due to illness or morbidity or other challenges. We pray for all who are sick and suffering. Today we pray especially for Tim, Erica, Darlene, Jack, Tom, Dick, Weston, Nathaniel, Oliver, Ashley, Lilas, Florence, Agnes, Paul, Willa, Oren, Barbara, and Walter. We pray for those whose names we lift before you now.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of new life, you come among us in the places that we least expect it. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace to those of you in the parking lot. Peace be with you. You can be seated when you are done. I have a few announcements for our ministry together. Um, when you walk... When you walked in, there are a lot of things going on in that gathering space, so I invite you to walk around and take a look. A few things I'm going to highlight for you. Uh, there's a table uh, with our youth. There is a couple of, uh, there will be one of, at least one of our youth out there um, this morning. Um, there are several things going on there. Um, one, you can order um, these t-shirts. Today is the last day. We extended it, so today is the last day. Um, so please feel free to order one of these shirts. There's a QR code right in your bulletin. You can um, do that. They make great stocking stuffers. Um, we had our confirmation kids, like, give us input on, like, what shirts they liked. So, like, teenagers think these are cute. Just throwing that out there for those of you who have teenagers you find hard to shop for. Um, so today's the last day for the T-shirts. Uh, you'll also find out there um, the youth are selling gift cards again. Um, Quick Trip, Bick and Berry, and Big Girl Stickers and Stems um, cards are available. Uh, we are also offering gift wrapping assistance for anyone who is not good at it or just hates doing it. Uh, just shoot me an email or call me and we will figure out a time that some of our young people can assist with that. Um, I do also want to bring your attention to, um, and the, in your bulletin you'll also see another QR code. We are having a date night on Friday evening, December 3rd. Um, so down here, you can scan this and sign up, or you can talk to me and sign up if you're like, I don't know what that square thing is. Um, uh, we're doing a date night. This is for um, couples who have been together for any length of time, um, and we will have child care available for those people who um, would need that. So any amount of time that you've been together, um, it is still good to uh, be together intentionally, have some time together, um, and then we'll have some conversations about um, important relationship things like communication, conflict resolution. How many of you have ever had a fight about loading the dishwasher? Then you should come on Friday <laughs> um, and learn some, some helpful uh, communication um, skills and tools. So we'll have some fun and we'll have some good conversation. So uh, please um, sign up to come to that because it's going to be a great um, event together. You'll also notice there's um, a Christmas tree out there with brightly colored mittens. The Chatfield Christmas Project is um, underway, uh, so you'll notice there uh, the tags you can pick up. Um, those are items for uh, specific uh, kids and part of the families, or there are also items, things such as, you know, tape and bows, wrapping paper, things like that, um, that are needed as donations as well. So uh, please grab a mitten. Um, it you can tend to those things. There's also um, some pages that have lists of other items that are needed. Um, any items that you are going to bring need to be back here by December 11th. If you have questions about any of that, talk to Julie and Sarah. So thank you to those two for all the work they've done in making this um, important event happen in our community. Also out, outside, this is my last one, I promise. I know it's, <laughs> I know it's a lot. Um, offering envelopes for 2022 are on the table out there. So please take a look uh, and grab your um, box of envelopes. Um, if, you, if you only give online, you might not have a box of envelopes. If you only give online, maybe look to see if you have a box of envelopes. And then if you don't want them, just talk to Michelle and she'll not order you some for next year. So, are there any other announcements? How about our Chatfield football team? <laughs> All right. I want to take a moment uh, to say thank you. Uh, for the ways that you have supported our congregation through your offerings, um, through offering things like uh, music, through uh, sharing your gifts, through uh, teaching Sunday school, through um, whatever it is you do to share your gifts uh, with the congregation. Uh, we share our financial offerings as well, um, of course, and those are um, used through this congregation um, and through the greater ELCA to make a difference 
um, in God's kingdom on this earth. So thank you for your gifts. If you have a financial offering this morning, uh, the offering plates are in the back of the sanctuary. We invite you to um, drop those there. You can, of course, give online or uh, mail in an offering as well. So thank you for the many ways that you uh, support God's ministry um, and uh, by sharing your own gifts. I invite you to stand as is comfortable for you, and we will continue with the offertory prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you've blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in our sending song, number 441, Oh Happy Day When We Shall Stand. Now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.